Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. May I kindly request to be seated. Our webinar is about to begin, and kindly switch off your mobile phones to silent mode to avoid interruption. A very good afternoon and warmly welcome to all honorable professor and guests. On behalf of Lube, I am warmly welcome all of you in today's webinar. May I introduce myself first? I am Dr. Nayula. Today, I shall be serving as Master of Ceremony. It's my great honor to take care of CMC for this important event for our medical professionals. Before going to start the event, I would like to announce the agenda of today's webinar. Agenda 1, announcing the opening of webinar. Agenda 2, welcome speech by Mr. Sachin Biani, Deputy General Manager of Lubin Limited. Agenda 3, opening address by Chair Basin, Professor Mihan. Agenda 4, Updates on Diabetes Hypertension 2023 by Professor Kuku. Agenda 5, Hypertension Treatment Simplified by Dr. Prabhin Power. Agenda 6, Product Presentation by Dr. Josia, Nishidensis Manager of Lubin Limited. Agenda 7, Closing Remarks by Chair Basin, Question and Answer. Agenda 8, Hold of Thanks from Lubin Limited. Agenda 7, Closing, Agenda 9, Closing the Webinar. According to Agenda 1, I am proudly announced that to date hybrid webinar or the robust clinical ARB Bensada is successfully open. According to Agenda 2, I would like to invite Mr. Sachin BNE for work and speech. Hello, Re Minglaba. Good afternoon to each and everyone present over here on this uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, respected and dear our chairperson, Professor Umiha, our speaker, Professor Ukoko, our speaker, Dr. Uh, Pravin Powell, and all the eminent professors, associate professors, uh, GP King, GP Queens, and all the doctors who are present here, I, on the behalf of Lupin, welcome all of you to this great afternoon for the great scientific session on Walsarton. I'm really thank you to all of you for having your valuable time and to come to this intellectual session. So once again, I won't take much time and I heart I heartily and I warmly welcome all of you to these sessions and I will request you to please open your mind and you can have any kind of question and answers because we are having very great and intellectual speakers and chairperson over here. So I just again formally welcome all of you to these sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sachin Biyani. According to Agenda 3, I would like to invite Professor Mihan as the chairperson for academic webinar. This hybrid webinar is a very important part of the community. We are here in the community. We are here in the community. We are here in the community. เดี๋ยวจะเรียนเสียงอารมณ์อีกคุยจะมาเจนเซียนอารมณ์เนี่ยที่ส่งยาวาซีสุดเพื่อทำให้ดูสมุนกรรมต่างๆออกไปเลย
topics are uh, the hypertension treatment simply fine you know? the hypertension treatment simply fine uh, dr pravin pavola maybe or sunu ma phit pa le so i am really pri privileged and so much delighted to be here together with my two eminent speakers uh, professor koko and and uh, dr pravin because uh, these speakers are uh, very well known here and professor koko i don't think uh, i need to introduce him to the audience so he is well known in the field of diabetology and also many many uh, cme programs he has he has contacted in the past you know? he is very actively participated in the all the continuing medical education program you know? and now dr pravin i think uh, dr pravin uh, he has uh, appeared in many uh, previous the the uh, webinar in in the conditions like the uh, in in the topics like uh, uh, hypertension and uh, hypertension related related diseases so uh, he is a interventional cardiologist in the panlai hospital so he is not very new to us uh, he is uh, I, I, we can say he can, he is the local person here for he has been present for so many times uh, and before studying the symposium so he is requested and then we are also urging him to wear the taipung and longi maybe the next time in the symposium i can we can we can see and dr pravin with the longi and taipung so i i think we are so much uh, proud you to be here with us so without much ado we will continue our session and the first speaker will be the professor koko he will be talking about updates on diabetes hypertension 2023 thank you and professor koko please Hello. Hello, Ming Lawa. Hello. Ming Lani Lege Ma. Di ni Chenaru Symposium ni Tung Lao Shi Ye Dia Chenaru Symposium Liu Laiyao Teyao Kui Ye Dui Jiao Miao Yi Ji Du Di Ma Re. Chenaru Zhu Xi Yao Ne Tanai Lao Zhu Dai Biao Dao Ba Me. So I'm wearing the Longji and Tai Pong. So may I speak in the Burmese, right? You are wearing the Western, and you can speak in English. Right? So general, um, next 30 minutes time, I will be focused on the diabetic hypertension. Or not. I know general, I know that in 2023, hypertension discussion is a lot of people. Chenoruka, the hypertension are very common. Chenoruka, diabetes, and hypertension, a million to a shibari. A lot, Chenoru, the hypertension and diabetes are million, general population, male to a day. A lot, Chenoru, the diabetes and hypertension and to a line, Pietanaga, Palais of Cariwas Lava. The Jamlu Cariwas Lama, Dukabide, Nephrology, Dukabide, Tretanopedi, Dukabide. The young diabetes only the known Dukabide Ama. The Kelo, the hypertension, my two line, General Nineka, Iluma, Payao, Focus Lua Mesui, Kadu was Lau, Focus Lubulure, and also you should emphasize on nephrology as well as the retinopathy. Now emphasize Lubuluare, the young General Naku Bowing, General Dow, deadly Juru, Lutin of Tamabar. So deadly Juru, the Black Common Pier Levono, Black Common Pier Lesui, hypertension is twice. As common in diabetes, but no, the main the hypertension in new onset diabetes, gale, 2.5 times in the hypertension material. Two are a low hypertension near 20 to 40 percent of IgD patient, you are hypertension on she and then general type 2 diabetes, a 40 to 50 percent in male general hypertension. I she get low diabetes hypertension to a line of one for general pain. Me up the yellow diabetes hypertension to a line, a CBD risk at general. ตองซ่าเราปูตั่วล่ะเราเจนเราตั่วตุยอ่ะเดี๋ยวจะมาลุเจนเราอ่ะดีนักกูอ่ะคอมมอนลี่เจนเราตั่วตุยอ่ะแ
ไฮเปอร์อินซูลินเนมียเนี่ยอินซูลินเรซิสแตนท์ดิบาลาซอรอไฮเปอร์เทนชั่นอ่ะบลูไปเลยซอจีเนเรติกเนิร์วัสซิ
ซัชไอดีเชนเจสดีผิดเนบีแอนเดนเจโนดาบิผิดตาเนี่ยคาเรอะดิวาสดาริสอะตั้นเนบีซอโหซาเรียไอจีดีออปรีดาบิสเตจ
the treatment of hypertension diabetes patient are associated with significant clinical benefit. These observations support a uh, global blood pressure at 140, 90, and it's not a good thing. The hypertension and diabetes to a disturbing thing is that the disease is not a good thing. 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 But I'm not going to talk about the conventional standard in the one city by Matawa and his role. This study don't want to be able to get back. That's a 2018 diabetes candidate. I'm going to talk about the other one. So to modernize it, like the intensity of the stroke jarring, 36%. Total mortality, 27%. Major cardiovascular rate, 25 jar. So this study, they go no, Papio to Alessio. So intensity to Kongja, Kongja. Jadi, jenar, jenar itu kekurangan kama, jenar itu balu amne, one forty ninety out ma, jenar yang cam. Tapi di study itu kau nua, cai kau ni esok, jenar piah dua ratus pan. Jadi, jenar di study itu kau nua, jenar bah piah dua ratus esok ini, di mana kau piah dua. Fever di bibi luar ini intensi liku ini, kau ngulung kau ni esok, kau ngulung piah dua. Jadi, jenar itu dari kau ni la bi dua ratus kama, jenar bah ti la le, ti kau ni kau ni, kau ni. One forty ninety out the chain, count the so. Yeah, the economic general evidence free is that general people are happy about. Target, how much time count me? So, who can study the economy? They are lazy, go the out the people. So, they are lazy, go the out the people. The study, the total money, look at the people. Who can be able to host study? Go the out my chain, count the look about it. Advanced study, male one thirty six seventy three or chain, count the look about it. Who can go a contradiction? Alas, Rodi, a cost of these who are to cool like day, and at the lead in a concept of Ujama look day, cardio was a risk, a multiple risk for that she threw up. Target go 120 D, sister only do a child. That's all they go, not sit only 120 D child. Give up my 140 D child. I go child like a ma, cardio was from a child with a stroke to a child, who long period of your, and I call that by your list of 120 D child, period of your, do up. Tua kau juga soalnya macam jauh. Tapi split study ada bab jual esok. Wan tu ada design kau ni lu jual biar. Dua jenis kau ni lu jual. Tu orang macam kau ni jual. Aini aku aku ani. Aini macam orang kontradik je tuan. Apa lu orang malah? Apa lu cah malah macam jauh la? Je tuan. Tapi macam jenis orang pihak sini lagi dek ama. Di spring ah luri mac double slow ama bau. Plus tu orang luri ya aku orang ada dia ngene. Plus kau mau beli dia yang ngene. Kau mahu beli tak mesti. Di luar luar itu ada yang lebih cawar. Atau di luar luar itu ada 120 out di jenar cawar yang kama. Terus kalau bahasa risk lecak ada kongkau ni so tua tua. Di aku kau pihon tua je dia kama. Aku masih ada dua si juri lepas. Terus kau mahu beli ni ada yang lebih. Luar luar 120 lecak atau tiga orang. Atau bahasa tua tua ni so kau mi di study nak kau senji lagi dia kama. Aku ada ada ji ji. Comorbidity, no, one to a day out time, two am chani at the nine, the whole am yare, no, supply yare, at the nine, can I see, one to a day chak, kao ne esra, to la wale, no, I am jam lo, jano roa, nao song pe jaro, blu bian do api le so, kuna ta ya wepi api ora wa, no, a kao karo, ma kao ngu biyo wale, intensive blood pressure control ma, DM ma, ma kao ngu biyo le, to me me, supply nga kao ne lu biyo le, Aduh nak kuat, baru kuat ni ada jenar simbi awi awi. Nau zoom bido, jenar apa bawa tambah lagi leh jenar individualisation ni. Kalau saya rasa saya sih malah leh luna jiwa, ada jiji la, kena emosiu la, si jual eh si deh deh, tiga leh tiga ni nevi, no, am chan eh saya, akon tu akon tiga ni saya. Ada jam lo, dia tuh saya ku si selau tu, tolau bi, dia ni seri tu am chan eh, ati boleh ni ada, dia dia tetap jual lagi, no. Ada kan yang yang kena yang alat si dia memang alat tu yang lebih nanti, no cara cara, kau ni, lah supply yang apa lah, no saya jawab, jangan lupa, nak tahu mana babio tu alat tu, dah lihat, awak nak jawab lihat uji lepas ya, awak nak jawab mana babio tu alat, patient who have higher risk of cardiovascular event, particularly stroke or albuminuria, who can attain intensive blood pressure control relatively easy and without adverse effects, you know, intensely cari alat tu alat. Kanai si dia lu, aduh mewiri alah si dia, alah tuin cawa. Pesan we, 
condition, more common in older people, functional limitation, polypharmacy, multi mobility, and are you raw less intensity? Chavas raw to not in a court area and spring area to no root in the agima. A good now so make 2023 ADA. No, Nasana send him don't then my general to allow it. Target young Mawari. I target a papier to allow it. One thirty eighty. I go, you know, a general nalegera one forty ninety. Right. General D. Natown and Nesene Toma Tanginga, all the target car, one forty ninety. Diagnosis gale, one forty ninety. Target gale, one forty ninety. Now, new ADA release, and the target is one thirty eighty. One thirty eighty, repeated on two measurement at different times. One thirty eighty is a new definition. And if you have a uh, one eighty by one ten with established CVD, Hypertension can be diagnosed only one one shaman. That chain in a yard. The yellow is 130 80s on the chain time. This is a new definition. This is, they are, they are agreement with the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association. The means American decided let aggressively they control the blood pressure, right? But ESC is not agree at the moment, right? Europe got at our still not very much agree. Euro is still going over 14090, right? Because that's a, a lot of logistic issue. A lot of logistic issue. Even though you know, Nangama, we, we going down to 13080, there might be more and more people to treat for the hypertension. They have you have a lot of uh, logistic, but no? in our country it's okay because everybody has to buy with their own pocket money, right? But uh, if you have a reimbursement or that the, 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 the government has to pay, there might be a lot of problem, right? That if you going down the blood pressure to 130, why the American are decided to go for aggressive treatment is mainly based on the splint. Splint are not the other way. If you don't have a very much comorbidity machine, no, if you go in down to 130 AD, a lot of study at your diet, 130 AD giant, comorbid, compound, or mortality, compound, so the young. Now, the decided whether this is a chairman and president of hypertension society is there here. No, say, you should decide, right? So you should decide in Yemma, where uh, whether guideline is going down to 130 AD or still we're going to 14090, right? Daro Kwa was I should be a individualization of a general to Ajimare, General Ninea, Tabeme Pietana, General Training Biaro, General Government at the Chilum Bioni, Government, Minua Tia Lide Kuze Matamala, Tia Dunde Shis in Matamala, Nina General Zilo Kaimare, Leshido General Cardiology Net Time, Mimido, General Tia Lide Kuzebe, Yoni Vadi Lozero, no? Taria Tipo, no? I wrote Peche Matua. No, the Amal has a 130 AD Zima, General Join Kuva, Lupioni Bavi, Target Gole, 130 AD, if you can safely attain Yanai Mesu, you know, 130 AD Mave, Tavalu, Lupioni Bavi, Taro, the American New Kailai Ma, the Jamu, General Tau, Lime Lam, Lime Lazaro, General Sunu Yama, Chipa, no, Taro, General Nine, Pedraki, Tomale, Steely, ideally. The drugs are type in here. No, must the 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 and the ID and the hypertension drugs in the diabetes like that should have a blood pressure 130 ADD chart in there. IS system block look in there. It is limited out. No, it might be prevent or improve or arrest the protein you are, or it may prevent and protect the CAD, CKD, congestive cardiac heart failure. It may be favorable for glycemic control. It may improve the dyslipidemia. No words in it. It may not worsen the peripheral vascular disease. No, it may not decrease the EGFR. It may not raise it. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to be. The other thing is, I don't know how it's going to be. A, B, C, D, C, 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 Volume yang niare, sosan terdiri yang niare, isolated sosial hypertension ini tinggi niare, 
ไม่ใส่ปาเทนชั่นเนี่ยมาอย่างเอ้ยเนาะตอนนี้ดิปินออฟดิปีบีเอ็มปาสิไต้ไม่ใช่หรอกออโตเซดิไอปอเทนชั
ဒီအရာပြီးကဒီခုနပဲအန်ဂျီယိုတန်စီမကုဝဲထားရင်ဇာတို့နေနဲ့စတုတ်ပြီဟာတ်ဖီလာတွေအမ်မိုင်းနေ
ဒီတော်ကြီးရဲ့ခါမှာနာတော်ဝါဟိပါတန်ရှင်းနဲ့ခရောနစ်ကီနီဒစီးဆီဟိုဟိုက်ဆီယံကရိနဲ့တော်
and then genora metabolic condition you three tava and baza dengaro who genori ne suggest lo daro heart failure ye diabetes nephropathy din ma dika pyo jin ma le ji du myai din ma le sir Thank you so much, Professor, for your academic talk. According to agenda five, I would like to invite Dr. Pravin Pawe for the academic talk with the title of Hypertension Treatment Simplified. or a very wonderful lecture. I would have heard two hours more. It was very crispy and uh, very interesting. So I will try to cover the some points in the hypertension overall, not focusing only on the one topic. So it will be general treatment management of the hypertension. Some slides will be repeated. So Minglava to all. So hypertension treatment simplified. So I will go basically in the first format to see the pro global prevalence of the hypertension. So it is almost 1.4 billion people are suffering, which is equivalent to the population of India. So it is easy to remember for me. So you can see that, and it is the top most killer. So 7.1 million per year deaths are attributable to the hypertension. As per the distribution of the hypertension is concerned, it is more common increasing in the into the low and middle income countries. As the developing countries had been progressed a lot and healthy lifestyle as making their incidence coming down. But low and low income and middle income company countries are increasing. So you can see the South America, Africa, okay, and uh, you can see the Southeast Asia where we includes the Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh. India on some it's diabetes capital, also the hypertension capital. So the incidence is uh, 30 per 30 to 40 percent in the male and 30 percent in the female. So it is not difference. Only the females are underdiagnosed because they are neglected in every society or people don't bother to check the blood pressure in the female. Why? Why it is important to control the hypertension and why we need education or every time on the hypertension because still now to the day this only 14% have got the complete treatment okay and uh, out of that 37 are receiving the treatment but they are not controlled and 47% uh, are aware they have it and so this we show that only the 14% having the correct control and rest of the people are just taking the medications to control it, but they are not controlled. And if you see in the epidemiology of the world, how the disease behaves, you can see this hypertension is the topmost killer as compared to the other uh, infectious diseases, diabetes, TB, traffic injuries, and malaria. So this is, which is simple preventable cause of the death, which we all should be aware. So, the problem with the hypertension is the there are no symptoms. 
So therefore they said, I don't have symptoms. Why do you, if you have fever, you take paracetamol. If you don't have symptoms of the hypertension, you will not take anything. So we know the basic of the hypertension because it is required for the treatment. Blood pressure is a product of the cardiac output and the systemic vascular resistance. Cardiac output basically depends upon the pumping capacity, but the systemic SVR is the, how your arterial stiffness is. So cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. Peripheral wall resistance is mainly the vascular structure, the elasticity of the blood vessels, which is responsible. So what are the mechanisms which are responsible for the blood pressure we studied already? It's basically the angiotensin II, which act on the 81 and 82 receptors, which causes the vascular constrictions, as well as the aldosterone, which causes the water retention, water and sodium retention, which further aggravates the blood pressure. So RAS system, as Professor mentioned, is a very correct thing, which is causing the hypertension. So the demographic profile, what the pa patients presents with us when we see uh, so the patient characteristics are sometimes like a high blood pressure, excessive dietary salt intake, obesity, old age, diabetes. And the secondary causes should always be checked when we are seeing the hypertension. If they are below 30, mainly secondary causes below the 30. Otherwise, it is most of the time essential hypertension. In the secondary causes we see for the obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, renal artery stenosis, renal parenchymal diseases, as well as the hyperparathyroidism, coarctation of aorta, or pheochromocytoma. So these are rare, but always should be checked when we are seeing with the unusual presentation of the hypertension. So how to diagnose the hypertension? So you know that this is a repeated slide, but I want to repeat every time. Because this is most important when we come to the clinic, the patient are in hurry, doctors are in hurry, they immediately sit, measure the blood pressure and the pressure goes high. During the stress period, please allow the patients to calm down for five to 10 minutes and then take the blood pressure. Ideally, it should be 30 minutes before that they should not consume the coffee or caffeine and uh, they should be relaxed in the quiet environment, which we don't get. And uh, then we should at least make them comfortable, take the two readings before labeling it as a hypertension. An average of two readings is recommended to give. Or sometimes if you are confused, you can call the patient into your inpatient room and check the blood pressure. So as it is mentioned already, if it is 130 or 140, you should recheck or recall the patient into the next visit. Or if it is more than 180 by 110, the patient can be directly started the treatment of the hypertension. There should not be much more confusion about the treatment or the guidelines in the hypertension. I simply make define hypertension as more than 140 by 90 is the hypertension. And uh, the treatment target should be less than 130 for each and hypertension. So as we see, let's go for the simple, simpler slide, which European Society, International Society of Hypertension, British and World WHO agrees. So this is what the, they agree on. Okay, so optimal is 120-80, normal is 130-85, and the hypertension, mild, moderate, severe, 140, 160-180, 90-100, 110-110. So keep it simple for the treatment. The two things which we, uh, theoretically, but always remember when we come in future, when we do the office and home BP monitoring, if it is a daytime, 24-hour ambulatory BP monitoring, more than 135 is defined as, more than one is hypertension. During the sleep, more than 120 by 70. So home blood pressure monitoring, 135 by 85 is taken as hypertension. So these are the few theoretical values. Sometimes we should take into the consideration whenever you are not aware that the patient coming to the emergency is having the hypertension. So why hypertension? Because this is all the spectrum of the diseases which are secondary to the hypertension. Or super specialities are being provided patient by the only one disease called hypertension, okay? So, so you say like neurology, cerebral hemorrhage, CKD, hypertension, encephalopathy, retinopathy, vascular disease, aortic aneurysm, LVH, myocardial infarction, coronary artery disease. 
So this all leads to the hypertension. So when you are screening for the secondary hypertension, these are some criteria. So whenever the hypertensive patient, when there is an age below 30, and uh, the conditions like a drug resistance or drug-induced hypertension, and uh, exaggeration of the previously controlled hypertension, disproportionate TOD to degree of hypertension, malignant hypertension, and diastolic hypertension mainly in the older age, 65. See the diastolic pressure with the old age falls down. Huh? After the 70, the diastolic go down, treat only systolic. That is common questions that out of pressure may I pressure what to do? So diastolic is a very confusing, but prof clear it. We should treat diastolic very properly. Otherwise it has one of the leading cause of the heart diseases. But with the age, the diastolic goes down. Maybe because of the moderate air or severe air. So above 65, you try to treat the systolic. If the diastolic goes below 60, 70, don't worry too much about that. So what are the general investigation when we are to, uh, talking to the hypertension patient, we should do is uh, uh, routine our CP, creatinine, urea and electrolytes, uric acid, the urine deep stress for the albumin urea, or, or random blood sugar, HbA1c. And on the ECG, we can see the atrial fibrillation, LVH, or my previous myocardial infarction. To rule out the secondary causes, we can do the uh, echocardiography to see the coarctation of aorta, renal artery stenosis, or ultrasound abdomen to see the kidney size, and uh, fundoscopy for the retinal changes. So this is advanced investigation to see the hypertension-mediated organ damage, HMOD. It is a very uh, important topic nowadays because which can be, we, sh we should in a hypertensive clinic evaluate it for the patient with hypertension. The simple test for the, what we can do is the fundoscopy and dipstick for the urine. So that microalbuminuria, so that we know that we have to treat aggressively with the ACI or ARBs to prevent the further kidney disease progression. So what is main aim is to prevent the target organ damage. Where, why these values 130, 140 comes into the place is to prevent the target or they found that the CVD or cardiovascular risk factors reduces when you achieve this target. Okay, so you can see this hypertension when we can control. We can control a lot of that. And this is the trials why hypertension should be controlled. You can see the multiple trials where they show that the sheep, VA, Gold, Gothenburg study, Australian study, MRC. So whenever these are the control patient and these are the treatment patient. After the therapy treatment of the hypertension, we can get the highly reduction in the mortality. So as we said, okay, I will not confuse with the slides. Okay. Whenever you have simple hypertension, young age patient coming with the hypertension, no risk factor, treat 140 by 90. Patient with the diabetes, cardiovascular risk, CKD, or any atherosclerotic vascular heart disease with the mortality of more than 10% per year, you should treat the patient above 130-80, okay? So most of the patient associated with the comorbidities should be treated 130 by 80 and target should be achieved less than 130 by 80 for each and every case. So this is how we evaluated from JNC uh, 3 to JNC 8, okay? And these are the various trials. Stop, hot, UKPDS, accomplish, accord, and other things. So finally, their conclusion is come below 130 by 80 to prevent the, all your target organ damage. So as Prof mentioned, the people try to come to one, according to the sprint accord and SPA3 below 120, lower the better is also the concept nowadays. If you can lower it much better, it can prevent definitely the stroke risk and hemorrhagic stroke risk, and you feel better. That is most of the things. Otherwise, the agitation and the frustration with the hypertension is too much nowadays. So what is clinical inertia? It's, it's a good term. When, we, when the physician or people in the healthcare providers, they do not intense, initiate or intensify the therapy during the patient's visit. So don't hesitate to try the, any medicine which you can add on or reduce, don't worry about the hypotension. Hypotension can be treated easily, but the long-term effects of the hypertension are difficult to treat. 
So therapeutic inertia is the uh, same that failure to increase the medicine dosage. Okay. So I think so clinical inertia and therapeutic inertia, you should, you can only overcome by the knowledge and treating more patients. So International Society of Hypertension also had divided into essential and optimal. If you don't have any adding anything and you are practicing in periphery, at least try whatever available. If you have amlodipine, try amlodipine. If you have low certain, try low certain. Don't try to be best. Your aim should be at least reduce the blood pressure by 20 by 10 mm of Hg if it is highly hypertensive. So that is what else. So just uh, before any pharmacological treatment, move on to the eight golden rules. Last time we discussed eight simple rules dealing with hypertension, you should all follow. I'm repeating because we can apply on ourselves. Measure your blood pressure, reduce alcohol intake, eat balanced diet, reduce stress, maintain the healthy weight, irregular exercise, reduce salt intakes, and take your medication as prescribed. Drinks less than two for men, for women less than one. Like, well, it's like a, one drink is equal to one beer, wine 100 ml, dash diets. Yeah, this slice I will skip because Prof already mentioned this. Regular exercise at least 90 to 150 minutes. If you engage in 30 minutes a daily moderate exercise is always good. Cycling, walking or brisk walk is welcome. More than 600 step at least you took. So when we say reduce the salt, they said to less than two gram or 1.5 gram, but we failed to see what not to eat. So we should tell them the salt is in this, okay? In soya sauce, there is a salt. In the pickles, there is a salt. Anything canned or packed food, there is a salt. Because this is a, only two things we can store by increasing the sugar or increasing the salt. Even the bacteria don't eat it, but we eat. So therefore, the, all these things have the high salt. We should avoid. In Myanmar, mainly in the nappi, as well as in the mohinga, onokause, all the noodles, okay? Everything contains salt. Even the nowadays the barbecues, hmm? mala, shangun, everything has a high contents of salt. Huh? And Ajinomoto is so frequent. And quit the smoking. This is an important slide, huh? but I don't know how many of you see. It's very interesting. 20 minutes, your heart rate, BP controls, 24. Heart attack chances decreases. Circulation of the lung increases. Nine months, you are getting rid of the lung diseases. After one year, heart disease. Five years, you can get rid of the cancer. <laughs> but to win of the total effect, it take 10 to 15 years. Okay. Interesting slide, but uh, smoking should be cut and it is one of the cause of hypertension. Okay. So let's go to the drug treatment. So major causes of the drug, what we had, see A, A, B, C, D, what we see. A, C, E, A, R, B, C, C, B, beta blockers and the diuretics. We all know the actions. A, C, I by A, T, 2, that converting enzymes inhibition. So the angiotensin 2 is not formed. Second, CCBs act mainly on the peripheral vessels. So they cause the peripheral vasodilatation. And then secondary, the side effect they cause is the sinus tachycardia. Other things, the beta blockers work on the cardiac by reducing the heart rate. And the diuretics works on the GFR so that by eliminating the sodium, they reduces the uh, blood pressure. So as, uh, as we see last slide, as Prof described, so if you are in stage one, stage two. So everything where, everything where the lifestyle is advised, okay? If you are in pre-hypertension, if you are 140, you can recheck, call him in the next visit by diet modification. But after two, three, three months, two visit, if you confirm the diagnosis, straight away start the treatment. So there are two ways to treat. So let's come on the treatment. This is the important part. One part is A plus C or A or C. You can use the combination, both A plus C at the low doses or A or C separately. So it depends upon the patient characteristics and the hypertension first time he is presenting with. So the step two, if the patient, patient is not achieving his target blood pressure of 130 by 80, you, you increase the doses, do a full dose combination, okay? Stage three, if the, it's not con, not, Achieving the target, you can do A plus C plus D, means ARBs plus calcium channel blockers with the diuretics. Here, 
one thing you should read is the beta blockers can be step up at any time in this condition. In the whether the young tachycardia or anything, but uh, as, a, as mentioned in cases of the heart failure and the atrial fibrillation and post AMI, they should be added compulsory. They have their own effect on the sympathetic nervous system, which is highly activated along with the RAS system in the patient with. So these two systems are there. They are protective, but when they are very activated, they destroy the body. So post AMI and in the heart failure, these are very active. So we need to consider compulsory to control these two systems. So uh, we hardly go after this, but I want to tell you that once we are beyond this level, means at the ACD, there is one drug which is called a spironolactone, which is underused. If the patient kidney function is okay, you add the spironolactone combination, half dose, okay? 20 milligram half dose of the tablet in the patients who are not controlled. It can give a magic readers, results. Your blood pressure can be well controlled. Okay, after that, we know A, C, D, and spironolactin. What next? We stopped. So at that time, always remember there are two, three drugs which are available. Okay, we can send to the specialist, but if you want to try at uh, your general clinic, uh, you can add uh, on to the like uh, alpha blockers, like uh, daxazosin or prazosin, mainly in the night just watch for the hypotension, start with the 2 mg, so that it will be the add-on drug. Other drugs which are available is hydralazine, okay, which is an arterial dilator, 25 BD we can use. Another drug which is available is a methyl dopa, which is mainly used in the pregnancy induced hypertension. So that can be added as a 500 BD dose. Rest of the drugs which are not available are clonidine, bromide, and other things. Okay, so this slide, which is simplified A or C, A plus C, or anything C plus D or A plus D or A plus C plus D. If potassium is controlled, add spironolactone. If the heart rate is high, add beta blocker. After this, add alpha block. Hope this is clear. So let's go for the individual drugs, which at least you should know what are the classes available in the country currently. So we are going for the RAS uh, ACI and ARBs. Mostly ACI we know is the enalpril, enam, or perendropil, cell, which is available here, ramipril. These are very beautiful drugs and has been serving humanity from more than 50 years. So this is the recent card, which is palatable and as well as dose adjustable. So candy satin, every satin, low satin, tel, olmi satin. So it is the, we should know what drug we are using, either whatever has been said. So this is just a common dosing. You should all know what we should start. Uh, like for low satin 50, wall satin 80 or 160. It be satin 180, candy satin 16, telma 40, and olmi satin 20. So both, as we said, ACI and ARBs are helpful for the kidney protection. They reduce the microalbuminuria. They cause prevention of the CKDs. They will reduce the LVH incidence and they will reduce the AFib incidence. As CCFs, we have amlodipine, clinidipine, nephidipine. These are the main which are for the hypertension. For the rate control in patient with the SVT, this Diltiazem and verapamil are poor blood pressure control agents, okay? But they can be used as a, in a rhythm control, like SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. So mainly we have the amlodipine dose. See the, like, as we mentioned, the uh, ARBs prevent the LV, uh, kidney failures and the LVH. The uh, CCBs are mainly in the stroke prevention, okay? So when we come to the beta blockers, it's a little bit confusing, but I will make you simplified. Okay. So beta blockers add whenever your heart rate is more than 70. Okay. So there are many classes of beta blockers, selective, non-selective, vasodilators. So just be simple. Okay. We are, when we say it is a cardio selective, we have to bisoprolol, atenolol, metoprolol. So this will not cause the side effect of COPD. Okay. And then are then there are some non-selective. Carvidilol, labetalol. So carvidilol basically non alpha and alpha and beta blocker. So we can use in heart failure. 
Third, it's a beta-1 selective, it is nebulon, where we can use uh, to prevent the erectile dysfunction in the, when we are using the beta blocker. So in the young pe people, it is good. Propanolol is very good for generalized anxiety, but please avoid in the cases of COPD. It may exacerbate the COPD. So just go to simplified. It is uh, particularly benefits in the post AMI patient as well as in the CHF patient. So just to simplify, more simplify, bisoprolol used for the hypertension, okay, whenever the heart rate is high, carvedilol for congestive heart failure, metaprolol for post AMI cases because it has the vasodilatory action. Okay, it may prevent the recurrent angina. And nebivilol for young patients with the COPD for who are feared of having erectile dysfunction. Diuretics, we all know, but mainly I will concentrate frusamide and we use commonly thiazide diuretics in hypertension, okay, like chlorothiazide. Frusamide are the loop diuretics used in mainly in the creatine is high. Okay, don't use routinely. Otherwise, they will cause a lot of weakness. Potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone and amyloride, which can be used in a combination with the loop diuretics, used in the patient who are obese with the OSA, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. We'll share the slides. It is a little bit going fast and in English, but uh, I want to emphasize on the main topic. No, don't uh, go all on the slides. Okay. So I will repeat once again. Potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone and ipilirinone are regarded in the treatment of hypertension in the resistant hypertension with the OAC. Spironolactone causes gynecomastia, which is common side effect. At that time, you can change to ipilirinone, okay, which is newly available, has less side effects like gynecomastia. Don't be worried. Thiazide diuretics, be aware, always check for the sodium potassium in the elderly after one month because it may cause hyponatremia and patient may become lethargic. Don't miss it. Loop diuretics, CHF, post-AMI, or in kidney failures. So the second I said is clonidine bromide, which is alpha-2 agonist, which is used in cases of the advanced hypertension. And uh, alpha-1 blockers, which are excess. Actually, mini-press XL or mini-press, they are good as a fourth drug you can add, okay, for the having hypertension. So some classes, it as it is general hypertension simplified talk, when you come with the malignant hypertension, uh, mainly in cases of the aortic dissection, preeclampsia, or in the cerebral stroke, when we need for the sudden reduction in the hypertension, you can use nitroprusside, hydralazine, or nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is easily available. Try to use nitroglycerin diluted into the NS by the infusion. In the pregnancy, I just want to highlight that most of the drugs are contraindicated. ACI, ARBs are contraindicated. You can use mainly the methyl dopa and clonidine bromide. So methyl dopa is available frequently. Kindly use that. Another beta blocker which you can use is labetalol. Okay, IV you can use or oral. So labetalol and methyl dopa are safe during the pregnancy. If it is not available, amlodipine can also be used fairly in the pregnancy induced hypertension as well as any beta blockers. But avoid the ACIs and ARBs. So COVID-19 and hypertension, no need to withdraw ARBs and ACIs, we all know. And post-COVID, there is a high incidence of tachycardia. Kindly use the beta blocker judiciously to control the symptoms. With the time, you will come. And the recent confusion, I just want to clear morning or evening days. As in the ESC Congress, we attended in the Spain. There is no difference in the cardiovascular events, whether you take morning or evening dose of ACI or ARBs. The main thing is control of the blood pressure. But sometimes you feel that the morning blood pressure of the patient is high. Try to give the patient twice a day or evening dose. So that can prevent the early morning rise of the patient. Some patient may feel, see, our morning pressure is high. What should I do? Give them in the dose in the night at the, so that the early morning pressure can be controlled or divide the dosing. So let's see the cases. Let's just uh, to make it simplified so that what you had learned. So let's see. So yeah, 35 year young male with the non-diabetic came with the persistent BP of 140 
86 heart rate of 92 per minute and echo is normal and uh, creatinine i think so what's the first choice okay i will call in to my next opd but next opd also same so what is this first choice he will be anybody whether aci arb ccb or beta blocker see we can use either aci or arb but i think so this is young guy mainly with the sympathetic hyperactivity just try with the low dose beta blockers okay so sometimes it is your choice your patient should be feel comfortable okay if you give him amlodipine 5 mg his heart rate will be high bp will be low he will come with us yeah no not good very problem yeah, heart rate is pounding tell my you give his pressure will go down and he will say no i am feeling very dizzy beta blocker you give generalized anxiety will come down his pressure will come down give him lifestyle management after two three months if he's okay after that, slowly withdraw and stop. So, this is not all A, B, C, D. You should always apply your own clinical senses when you are in the practice. But most of the time, guidelines are follow. So, let's go to the next case. Okay. So, like a 54-year male with the DNU hypertension with the 140 by 90 blood pressure with the heart rate of 72, creatinine 1, and there is a microalbuminemia present. Okay. So this is like a stage two hypertension. So what will be the choice? ACI ARB plus CCB, CCB plus beta blocker, ACI with beta blocker or beta blocker only. So we can choose. So mainly I think so we, we should go as previous lecture by Prof. Koko also he suggested it. He goes into the stage two hypertension. And patient is having the microalbuminuria. So prevent the further kidney damage. And to have a good control target, okay, what ACCAH said, better we should start with the low dose combination or full dose combination of ACI ARBs. Okay. Don't give hypertension. Sometimes we cannot assess the level of hypertension during the first visit. So this patient should be started at the low dose combination of ACI ARB follow up after the 10 days, watch the blood pressure control. If it is not controlled, little bit increase, follow up after one month. If it is controlled, okay. And then after three months, like this should be that. The, your follow up regime also, you should know when to follow up. So let's go this one. So like 60 year female with entry wall MI, moderate LV dysfunction, diabetes. Okay, we'll add diabetes and the BP is 130 to 80 and heart rate 80 bits per minute. What you will do? So now it is post AMI, okay? So remember the words. First, okay, we need, okay, patient has diabetes, ACI. Diabetes means ACI or ARB. Second, post AMI means beta blocker, compulsory, okay? So we are two systems, RAS system, renin angiotensis system and SNS, sympathetic system. We are two R, we are blocking. So we can block with the ACI with the beta blocker or ARB with the beta blocker. So whatever is the choice and availability. Firstly, you should know the drug. ACI, ARB is like R. Don't waste timing in comparison. Whatever you know, better you use. Okay. But mainly post AMI, there are ACIs which are mainly studies are uh, perindropyl and Ramipril and Captropril. Secondly, ARBs mostly studies are Valsartan and Candisartan. These are only the two ARBs which are studied in the post AMI. Case four. So 54 AML come with the CKD with the uncontrolled hypertension of 200. This is most common scenario whenever the dialysis center are there. The BP is not controlled. Creatine is 6.2. Potassium is 5.2. Echo concentric LV is definitely. ECG will have HCG. So what we are going to use? So whenever we say CKD, our ACI ARBs are out. CKD, I'm staying stage 5, not stage 1, stage 2. Creatine 1.5, up to 2, you can use ACI or ARBs with the monitoring of the potassium. But after 2, I preferably ask you to hold. Switch on to the CCBs. Long-acting CCBs, we can use CCBs plus beta blockers plus alpha blockers and not the spironolactone. Use loop diuretics like 
lasix okay or fusamide spironolactone in kidney dysfunction will definitely raise your potassium and worsen the kidney dysfunction okay so spironolactone avoid in the cases where the creatinine is raised don't kill the patient by side effect be simple keep simple okay something we should know where we should not use hmm? case 5 so you can see that 48 year male with the resistant hypertension on the high dose of arbs plus ccbs okay so still pressure is high osa on cpap so what what is the third line a plus c plus d but what d you we are going to use in this case add aldactone with fusamide and a long acting alpha blocker add aldactone with the fusamide alpha blocker beta blocker so i feel the aldactone with the fusamide combination is more good in the cases of osa where we can uh justify the patient that osa patients have the neck edema which worsens because of the sleep apnea sleep apnea causes water retention so if you give diuretics their symptoms of the sleep apnea will come down and the long acting beta alpha blocker which is not currently available in the country for that you can change to the short acting but the twice daily dosing so take a moses reduce the polypharmacy use the single pill combination once a daily dosing or the multiple dosing control the behavior and daily habits provide adherence patients to the feedback home bp monitoring which is very cheap than the medicines today so ask patient to monitor the blood and uh, and check the things A reminder for the packaging of the medicines empowerment self you empower the patient if it increases give no problem it will reduce your headache okay and also empower the nurses huh? whenever they call nurses they should answer multidisciplinary healthcare approach and uh, effective measurement to management of the complex intervention this is the simple uh, whatever we all studied uh, and this is the simple who agenda eight points agenda to treat the hypertension so bp through threshold initiation for the pharmacology treatment is 140 for normal 130 with the comorbidities target bp less than 130 laboratory testing like urine dipstick or creatinine in potassium cvd score assessment which include diabetes hypertension smoking cholesterol classes of drugs a b c d combination therapy always should be promoted frequency of assessment call after one week call after one month if one month control call after three months treatment by non physician professional 1.4 billion okay we cannot handle treat everybody who can treat and each teach everybody who can learn the, about that mainly healthcare professionals nurses pharmacists everybody should be involved in this so this is a simple example some slides on walsertum prof has already covered this is not a new molecule which is uh, already has been come into 1990s so 30 years 33 years from time being as in the higher affinity to the 81 receptors and can be used at the all stages of the diseases including the diabetes hypertension lvh mi remodeling lvf dilatation so all stages we can use this okay and definitely the acis are better than the ccbs in prevention of the lvh as well as the uh, kidney failures and the post ami ccbs don't use in post ami cases so these are the valiant trial which compare uh, this with the captopril so we know that uh, valsartan is not uh, inferior to the acis in treatment of the uh, heart failure and also versus the placebo it has reduced significant morbidity in the patient with the acis with the arb and uh, almost 30 to 30% reduction and 28% reduction see uh, in the heart failure i suggest five drugs strategy aspirin or clopidogrel okay atorvastatin beta blocker and fifth is arb so always see that with the heart failure patient these five drugs are there 
and the diuretics, the combination should be depending upon the fluid status of the patient. So these are all the six drugs, which should be seen in case of post AMI or heart failure patient, okay? So there are other drugs which are four pillars of the heart failure. We'll discuss in the heart failure topic later in the another class. But to concern to this topic for the Walsat and because one ARB when we are taking the CME, at least we should know. Everybody know here low certain, tell me certain compulsory, but we should move on to the next generations. So AF is, uh, will have a big impact as our population grows above 60. As the age grows, the AF incidence will increase by seven, by the age of 70 years, 3% of the people have AF and by age of 80, 10%. And with the increasing hypertension and diabetes, the LV remodeling will be fast. And I think so LA dilatation will cause lead to the atrial fibrillation. Many studies had shown that long-term ARBs or ACI use reduce the remodeling and prevent the occurrence of the AF or delays the occurrence of the AF. So these are still the potential drugs in the hypertension for the future complications for the AF reduction. Okay, so not only this, other ARBs also help for the AF reduction, but uh, Walsatin has been shown prevail brilliantly in cases of the so post AMI heart failure and prevention of AF. So just to summarize this, so it has a good uh, cardiovascular outcome is indicated in the heart failure. High dose monotherapy is safe and effective and the hypertension is a powerful mediation for control of the BP and renal protection. And uh, because Arnie has came into the market, which is the combination of uh, sacrobacterial and valsartan. So I think so with the switchover will be easy in future in the post AMI cases, if the patients are on the valsartan. And uh, we all know the metabolic parameters are also improved by the valsartan. And so with this, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. for your academic talk. Agenda C is product presentation by Dr. Joseyar. I would like to invite Dr. Joseyar to the stage. ແລະວ່າຈົນເລົ່າລູບິນກົມນີ້ຈောင်းລີໂອ້ຕະຄຸນະກຸລໍຈົນເນາະສາລູບິນກົມນີ້ຈောင်းລີໂອ້ຕະ
ကျွန်တော်ဒီဟုဘောနော်ကျွန်တော်ဒီပွဲလေးရဲ့တော်ပစ်အဓိကမိန်းတော်ပစ်ကတော့ကျွန်တော်ဒီဘယ်ဆိ
ဒါကျွန်တော်ဒီကန်နာကဝဘဲဆတန်ထရိုင်လေးပေါ့เนาะဂျပန်မှာဂျပန်ထရိုင်လေးပါဒါဟိုက်ပါတန်စင်နဲ
uh, brought some of the news uh, update in the 2023 diabetic hypertension. ဘုရားလဲတစ်ခုရှိတာသူကလည်းဘူးဖေးမစားထားတော့ပိုပြီးတော့မြန်စာစားနေမြန်ကုန်ကာတခါတဲ့အင်းနဲ့အားနေပြ
So always when, uh, when these patients of the prostatic hypertension were initially all on, if suppose they are following with the physician and he put him on Valsartan ATMG for the mild hypertension he has and his BP is well controlled, 120, 80. And all of the suddenly next time he comes to the emergency or in the next day OPD, so at that time, okay, so he will say that, okay, pressure is around 100, 120. Why your pressure fall? Then, uh, okay, anything you are taking, any other medicine, prostate medicine he is taking. So that is flow easy or tamsulosine or anything which might have reduction in his blood pressure. And that may be the first dose hypertension. So that is the time we should withdraw our hypertension, hypertensive drug, and we can continue with the same drug for the prostate. So it can treat both. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me go on with another question. So I think this question is for uh, Professor Kuku. I think uh, amlodipine is not favorable for a kidney, kidney disease. Why? Why it is? I heard some point in your presentation that uh, calcium discussing about calcium channel blockers and the uh, chronic kidney disease. I think the question is, I think related to that that uh, presentation. Amlodipine is a system of therapy to dilate the the main renewable fluid are of this construction yard. In case of the ကျွန်တော်တို့ကအမလိုတပင်းကိုတုံးလို့ရှိရင်အင်ကေးစော့ဗီနီတီရီယာတွေမှာတော့မိုက်ခရိုအဗီမီယာ but in case of very resistant hypertension in no rename or not to rename at as well we maro general matanai mu general takalima select bingo general family go pd the one i see the car blue one can i neck ama nephi to be on the one she was you are up you know general i'm looking to be on general that night the law we need to micro admire uh, for the thank you, Professor Kuku. And the, the next was the next question say, is about the target blood pressure and the measurement of the blood pressure. And the question itself is for target blood pressure, should we measure uh, blood pressure either in the morning or in the evening? Or uh, either after antihypertensive or before taking antihypertensive agents. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Praveen again, thank you. Very, very good question actually. <laughs> and very confusing also. So when should we measure the blood pressure? Uh, so blood pressure, I, I feel so see there is a, Blood pressure and before the medicine or after the medicine, if it is controlled, it should be controlled. Okay. It's not like that after the medicine, I take the pressure goes down and then after some time it increases. So every time if you take the medicine, before taking the medicine, blood pressure should be 130 range. So that we called as control medicine. Sometimes what this effects of the medicine, this, if you are taking regular medicine, the effects prolongs, that is called a pleiotropic or good effect, which is if you skip the dose also, it will maintain your blood pressure. So if you are controlled, whether you take before or after, the blood pressure should be controlled. But if you want to measure the blood pressure, always measure one in the early morning before the medicine and one hour after the medicine. Most of the time, it should be below the target heart line. And it is, doesn't mean that if it is controlled 130, I should not take the medicine. It is controlled because of the medicine. Do not reduce the dose until you go in hypotension. If it is controlled, it is controlled by the medicine and you should take the medicine. So that is one thing. In case of the dilemma that my blood pressure is fluctuating a lot before and after the medicine, we recommend it to do the 24 hour Holter BP monitoring so that it will give the exact uh, the way how your blood pressure is behaving. 
in this blood pressure monitoring we see for the nocturnal dip if the nocturnal dip is not there that means your blood pressure is uncontrolled and it need, the medicine need to be titrated thank you thank you sir tenor len nenela h in my oh tenor o di ne di 24 hour monitoring lo de kha ma kyaw ni tiaw ma tu jaw tenor blood pressure variable di sa shi tu na ria tu a tu ga pyo wa tenor pressure yo tain lai a yan tet de a yan cha lo no a ku tenor ma ba tu yi le so sir tu na ga no tan ne dipping sa shi tenor ta man lu tiaw ga nya mane na na yi lao so yin tege ran cha tenor respiratory le cha me pressure le cha at our dipping normal dipping is at about 2 am or 3 am she up the children in my 24 hour general dying like they come i come on my job my job in a dead me then you have got the two up around 10 years there's no dipping machine i come a morning sashi bit morning margin or sashi fit it at all general study look like they come on to a in fire and no net stroke yeah no up is this 6 am and 12 pm 12 pm i each in my the in fire yeah don't change and the and the malgar infa and stroke are very much common in the 6 am to 12 pm no i don't know you know i'm not buying my second time i call them as you know i see you be out of my time out i don't you know i see you gb i call them a minute by the time i'm gonna buy you see how to be on time now you know what morning such would tell the job you know what i don't you know you know what you will pilot or a morning such good you know no กาวาผิดชินเนี่ยตัวจังซีดูญาณนี่ไปมาปีว่าล่ะลูกตัวจ้าแต่ก็เลยมาเหมือนเนี่ยโมลินซอยปีไล่เนี่ยเสร็จแ
Uh, thank you all the speakers and chairman to illustrate the a detailed, comprehensive explanation of hypertension, management of hypertension. Uh, generally, uh, we all know that uh, IRS system uh, play a very major role in uh, the genesis of hypertension. And uh, when we control, when we want to control the hypertension, we have to modify the IRS system behind the ARB or ACI. Uh, modify loaded drugs here, as a general rule, but my own sub or drugs here are ACI, you know? So the patient who has been on uh, ACI for a long time, and then now nowadays uh, we have a widespread use of a very various kinds of uh, ARBs. patient now ARB If you control more, if the you are uh, the hypertension is not very satisfactory. Uh, can you add ARB to uh, the uh, hypertensive patient with already on ACI? Uh, is there any risk or benefits? Uh, uh, can you uh, give a comment on that, please? Uh, Dr. Bravi. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, ideally, uh, in between, they had a trial about the ACI and ARB combination, uh, mainly in the mild kidney disease patients so that they can have more beneficial effect in preventing the proteinuria and the kidney dysfunction. But uh, that trial was a negative trial because of the risk of the hyperkalemia. So usually they uh, then from that day, they said that uh, better to avoid using the combination of uh, ACI and ARBs and also direct renin angiotensin, direct renin inhibitor. So these three should not be used in a combination. You either use ACI or ARBs or direct renin inhibitor. Because the only thing is the risk of the hyperkalemia increases because of the combination. Uh, but I see in the guidelines that you can add a uh, spironolacto uh, uh, add a stone and agonist uh, that is also the uh, potassium retention drugs uh, uh, restoring drugs so if you can add a stone to the uh, arb or aci yeah. why you can combine these two uh, drugs which modify a rs system because uh, the Ultimate aim is uh, to inhibit the AT1 receptor. So it falls in the same pathway. So ACI and ARBs. When we see angiotensin 1, it, one is converted to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 acts on the AT1 and AT2 inhibitors. So ARBs act on AT1 inhibitors. ACI act on for prevent the conversion of angiotensin 2. Ultimately, the pathway is in the same site. So the two drugs acting at the same level to prevent the AT inhibitors, that only the cock is before. One is at the ACI and one is at the AT1. So okay. I is there so, any situation uh, where so, you combine the, the, the two ARB and ACI? I, I, I will so not suggest I will, uh, I will be... I will not suggest to add it because of the risk of hyperkalemia. But uh, Prof. Koch, some opinion. โอเคว่าใช่ไกด์ไลน์เนี่ยเราต้องมาป้องกันมั้งเสียเพราะเราจะต้องย้อนดูว่าเจนเนอร์ว่าอีซี่ไอเนี่ยเอไอบีอ่
You, so you suggest that if the, the patient's already on ACI, if you want to give uh, ARB, you have to stop the AR, yes. ACI first and then continue with the yes, ARB. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, switch. ကျွန်တော်တို့တော့အလိုမစင်းစားမိခဲ့ပေါ့เนาะကျွန်တော်တို့ကဂိုက်လိုင်းစီရာဘုတ်အစီအိုင်အီအာဘီဘုတ်တ
a calf muscle strengthening is very important in further your heart remodeling as well as in the diastolic hypertension. Prof. Mate. ကြာကြီးပြီးပါကျွန်တော်တို့နေနဲ့ဖြည့်ဆွဲပြောခြင်းလို့ပါဒီစစ်တော်လိကငါးတဲ့ဒီတက်တယ်ငါးတဲ့
ဒီနေမှာနဲ့တော်နမေကြီးတာကအိုင်ပီစတင်အိုင်ပီစတင်ကအိုင်ဒီအန်ဒီထရာရဝီနေမှာတော်တော်မြောက်ကျွန်တော
And then agenda A is uh, approval test by Mr. Sachin Biani. So I would like to invite Mr. Sachin Biani to the stage. ແລະເດດາວມາຍໍຄລູຊິນີ້ພ້ຽວພ້ຽວຊົ່ວຊົ່ວອະດະກາດວ່າແດ່ມັນຍໍໄລ່ນີ້ລູກເນາະອະດີ
coming to this sunday afternoon night and afternoon time and having great discussions over there so everyone i am from the bottom of my heart i really pay thanks to you and i'm just requesting for our brand uh, valjek it's been available everywhere and uh, we have priced it very less as uh, as keeping in mind the myanmar myanmar economy and myanmar purchasing power so it is very reasonable price and available at all your clinics and hospital so thank you so much bye bye thank you so much mr sachin biyani According to Ajay Danai, all honorable guests and all respected persons, I would like to thank the key to our respected chairperson, our distinguished speaker, for providing your inspiring speech and sharing your wisdom with us, for allocating time in your busy schedule. Now, I would like to announce the robust clinic ARB Besada webinar is successfully concluded. Thank you so much to you all.